Hi everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. I'm still working with this beautiful 1937 D18. Today we're going to glue up one of the many top cracks. The first one I'm going to deal with is one here in the upper bot. There's another corresponding one over here in the same spot. There's another one right here at the corner of the fingerboard through the rosette and looking in there today to prepare to glue this one, I noticed another one that actually goes under the fingerboard. There's quite a few cracks right here in this area. It is a real crucial area for the structure of the instrument. It's probably the area that changes the most over time that makes an instrument need a neck reset over that period because the whole thing is kind of doing this. The end of the fingerboard is pushing into the sound hole. The sound hole is kind of collapsing on this side. The back is kind of moving. The sides are moving. Everything is moving and pulling that neck up into a uh, less than ideal angle. I, of course, knew that there was uh, just the one transverse brace. That's what this one's called here that goes right underneath, underneath the end of the fingerboard at the front edge of the sound hole here. And uh, there is no popsicle brace. What's the popsicle brace? This is the popsicle brace. It's a very thin, pretty flat brace that on uh, some guitars goes the whole length of that area. In 1937, Martin did not include that brace on the guitars. They had several features of the bracing that are now thought to be quite desirable, which is uh, the X brace is what's called an advanced X, meaning it is fairly close to the sound hole. One knuckle in, about. Um, later on, they moved that X brace down this way in an effort to lend more structure to the lower bot, specifically behind the bridge. The other thing that it has, scalloped brace, which gives this sort of suspension bridge look to these lower braces. That actually reduces the size of the brace and some of its stiffness, but not a ton of the stiffness. It's one of the ways that you can reduce the size of the brace and maintain its stiffness, stiffness which allows the top to move more. An advanced X scallop brace guitar is thought to have um, a looser lower bath which gives the guitar uh, one of the things that can give uh, you know, a traditional vintage style dreadnought that really booming bass um, response. Popsicle brace, on the other hand, there's some debate about what advantage it would be to not have the popsicle bracing because certainly there are uh, builders who uh, build in a vintage style that don't use the popsicle brace. There are some builders that build in a vintage style that put in a smaller, shorter popsicle brace specifically for all these cracks that can appear from that major ten string tension. When I've got four cracks to fix in that area, makes you think that maybe a popsicle brace wouldn't have been a bad idea on this guitar. So what I've done, so I have a, uh, a cleat with a 45 degree angled grain. So when I put it in there, that grain will sit like that. The grain on the top is running like this. That 45 degrees goes against that to add some structure to that area. And I'm gonna use some plexiglass calls and magnets to put that in there. So. This plexiglass call has a slight dish right there. I've used a double stick adhesive tape, very thin, to uh, glue this in, or to tape this into place for the time being. I've sized it up to fit in that area right there. Um, yeah, it fits right in there. So now I'm gonna use this little stack of magnets. As you can see, pretty strong uh, grip there on these magnets to uh, glue that together. I'm gonna use hide glue, which I've got warming up in my uh, double boiler here. That will um, hydrate that crack and swell the wood and bring that crack a little closer together too, which is what I'm looking for. It's certainly, it's a little hard to see right here, but I can also put a light inside the guitar. So it's definitely an open crack there. So I want to try and pleat that crack to reinforce it um, across the crack and uh, I want to do what I can to close that up a bit. 
So I've got my high glue ready to go. It's nice and teated up, nice and soft. And I also want to warm the area up. I'm going to warm the crack from the top here with my heat lamp and this cleat also that I've created. To uh, That will just increase the working time. Although with the magnets, things line up. The magnets allow things to line up properly pretty quick. And then I'm going to proceed in a similar fashion all around the guitar. There is several cracks in the lower bow here also that I have to deal with. There's one right here. There's one right here at the pick guard that I got to decide how to deal with. Gluing and cleating is necessary and then looking at any um, to see how the cracks have closed up. Most of them are quite close and this process will help them to close even more. So I have to do minimal if anything as far as filling that crack. Um, you know, with a wood spline or any number of things. And also touch-up wise, I'll have to do pretty minimal stuff because of the condition of the finish of the top, which, um, you know, is well worn. I want to clean the top up a bit from the dirt, I'm trying to minimize anything else that I'm doing to it. And uh, just to uh, maintain the beauty of the well-worn guitar and uh, just to allow it to look as original as possible. And uh, a lot of people, myself included, love this kind of well-worn look. I'm going to take my brush with just some warm water on it and put that on the cleat itself and also in the crack to try and get that hydrating, closing, closing of the crack situation going. And uh, warm water on the cleat too just helps to kind of prep it if the glue will not sink into the uh, wood and wick into the wood and go away. It'll still it'll uh, sit a little better on the surface. So okay, so. Go on the cleat. Go in the crack. back and forth a little to force that glue down into the crack as much as I can. Wipe up the excess. I'll see if we can get this lined up properly. All right. Now we just have to let it dry and I will Continue on this process with uh, some more cracks. So there you have it. Crack repair on 37D18. Thanks for tuning in. Be safe, be smart, wear your mask, social distance, all that good stuff. Uh, see you next time on In the Shop. Thanks.